And it's true. Uh, we've had a few 50th birthday celebrations. I want to do it for my 50th birthday. And so, again, it's, you know, how you raise the money and, and why you're doing it um, are all reasons to continue to be part of it. You know it would be wild? For you to go a, over the edge? <laughs> a uh, proposal. We, we, had, we had somebody who approached us about that. Oh, no. And Am I saying because it's not allowed? No, no. I, oh, okay. I, I, I think it, what happened is that we. They check it out. They, well, or they, yeah, like they didn't get back to it. They, you know, it was one oh, of those okay. things where we, we didn't promise them they could do it. But when we contacted them to talk about it, it never, that conversation never happened, I believe, was the other thing that we had. And I think we might have had somebody <laughs> wanted to get, actually wanted to get married on the roof or something like that, which we hey, weren't going to allow that because of the. The logistic, you know, imagine the logistics of having that many people right. up on the roof. Um, but uh, there have been some many unique so stories over the years. And Henry Tomsick there, uh, who is on your right, again, the graphics we put up are so that when you see him on the building, you know exactly what you're looking at. Um, Henry Tomsick on the right, who is the father of a Special Olympics athlete, Ziggy. Henry has done this event over the edge every year it has been offered all eight years so again looking at a number situation eight times eleven hundred is almost nine thousand dollars that he alone has raised for special olympics delaware so you got henry thompson coming down as well as patrick seidel and we'll talk about both of them and when they start their descent You can see Henry is already in that squatting position. There he goes and got himself up, and now he's going to lean back. Henry eight times, and uh, Patrick Seidel is a first-time edger. So there is a perfect comparison. You've got somebody who has never done it and somebody who has done it every single year going down together. And I always wondered if that conversation takes place up there. You know, you've got to figure, like we've talked about, Patrick has got to be nervous. Everybody's nervous. I don't care whether you're scared of heights or not. But you wonder if the conversation has gone on. Oh, well, it's my first time. Henry, how many? Have you done this before? Yeah, actually, I've done it every year. <laughs> so now that uh, conversation how many, goes. What is it? Um, I know there have been two today so far that have done it every year. How yeah, many, three. What's the number? Three. Oh, three three okay. total. Danny Hall, the police officer. Yeah. He's the... Again, you know, just to clarify, he, he's registered and paid every year. Yeah. One year, he, uh, we had an intern who really wanted Correct. to do it. Really wanted to do it. Obviously, couldn't read, you know, a college student was, and it was kind of a last minute thing, got here. Wow, that'd be cool. Yeah. And he let her do it, which we thought was a very gracious thing. He was ready to do it, and he's the one, remember, who's scared of heights. Yeah. Doesn't yep, like yep. it. He'll sit, he sat here and said he doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't like it. He does it for Special Olympics. Um, and does a lot more for Special Olympics. And Marianne Evans, who went down about halfway, uh, and she came in and chatted about her daughter. And then now Henry Tomsek. So again, the three of them, if you figure eight years, $9,000 between them, 1,100 times eight, close to 9,000. So they've raised almost $30,000 just between the three of them and the amount of money uh, that that is and what that makes possible to do with here in the first state. So uh, Patrick Seidel and Henry Tomsick, or Hank Tomsick as he goes by, uh, getting ready to go over the edge. And uh, they are teammates, it looks like. Uh, Harvey Hanna Associates is where they work. And so this is a first. Hank's never gone down with anybody as a teammate. And right. so he recruited Patrick to go down with him. And he's as afraid of heights, Patrick is, uh, but says they're going down. There are members of the Elks Lodge because they want to help different uh, people in different ways. Patrick says he loves to play music and performed at the UD annual Ag Day Fest. So, he's a musician. Nice. A uh, part-time musician, I guess, or that's what he does on the side. Um, he wanted to thank Tom Harvey, TJ Hanna, who is the president of Harvey Hanna Associates, and the entire team at Harvey Hanna Associates for helping them raise money, as well as the Newark Elks Lodge number 2281. His mom, Nancy Seidel, his wife, Mary, and both the kids, Audrey and Elliot, for helping him to uh, promote the pro promote the event, create awareness about the event, and raise the money. So basically, uh, Hank and Patrick together raised $2,200 to go over the edge, and it was in large part due to the contributions of uh, Harva Haney Associates, as well as some givers, uh, individual givers as well. And once again, Hank is the parent of Siggy Tomsick, a longtime volunteer here with Special Olympics. So you see 
Hank coming down on your left and Patrick on your right. So we've got about, uh, I don't know, four hours maybe at the most left. We're pretty much on time. So we, uh, about, f how many hours in here? About almost, God, I'm, I'm blanking here. About four hours in too, so we're about that halfway point. Take it some good time and the rain is uh, holding off for now. Another look at Hank and Patrick making their way down. Looks like Hank got a little sideways there. I don't know, is he adding some layers of difficulty to this right now? But an eight timer on the left side, a first timer on the right side. Again, use the hashtag over the edge DE on Instagram and Twitter. We'll read those tweets and interactions on the air here. Give a shout out to your edger. Give a shout out to yourself. Share some pictures. You can check out some of our content as well, including some interviews and some behind the scenes stuff on Instagram and Twitter. And make sure you check out the Instagram story going right now more behind the scenes stuff from the day. Great coverage by Jimmy Smith and his crew here, a compilation of six people working both here in the broadcast room. We're located right on the other side of the signage that you see in the landing area. We've got a camera on the roof, camera outside, and a social media person wandering around, putting together things for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as Jamie mentioned. Once again, the sponsor of today's event, TD Bank. They've been the co-sponsor since the inception of the event. They hosted the cocktail party for the Edgers last night. People got to come and have some uh, appetizers and some uh, beverages and learn a little bit more. They got to see the building. Uh, we find a lot of first-time people come to that cocktail reception. Uh, everyone is invited, uh, but first-time people, I think, especially enjoy coming and getting kind of a lay of the land so that when they're coming into the city today, they at least know where they're going, where they're parking. Uh, that type of thing, it always makes people feel a lot better. So TD Bank also sponsoring the block party you've seen pictures of, or if you're now tuned in and having been here already, you've experienced outside. Um, also, Brandywine Realty Trust, they own the $300 Avenue building, and the owners and staff here have really bent over backwards for this event from the beginning, including the attachment of a permanent support anchor on the roof that stays there year-round, and that's what all of these ropes are tied into. And We talked about it earlier, how it's not just something where they wrap the, do a double knot around something that's sticking up on the rooftop there, but instead they've got the contraption, and there's our camera crew uh, right on uh, cue there, showing you how it goes into the building. And then once it's in that building, it is actually literally tied down to a cement structure. So it literally is impossible for the ropes to come undone. And so this building was gracious enough to allow Special Olympics to come in and make the changes to it. And then of course, today we basically take over the building. We're in the lobby, we're in the hallways, uh, we're in some of the bathrooms, we're on the 10th floor in one of the, uh, one of the rooms. And so it really is uh, a gracious effort here by the uh, $300 Avenue building, the people who run the building, uh, whether they're the security people up front, the people helping us with the internet connection, uh, the people getting us tables and chairs, whatever we need, uh, they do a tremendous job for us. And then of course there's the Newcastle County Fire Services. They are the third sponsor, came on board a couple years ago. Uh, they have several people that go over. They provide volunteer support as well as financial support for the event. Delaware Law Enforcement Torch Run, they've raised more than $6.5 million for Special Olympics. This is one of their signature events along with the uh, truck convoy, along with the ride to the tide. Uh, just three of the events that they were involved with. Sheridan Suites in Wilmington, they provide a discount on the rooms for the overhead staff, technicians, uh, Jimmy when he's in town, and so uh, an opportunity for people uh, to stay in a first class uh, hotel have a couple been blocks down. I have, I've been into the restaurant, I haven't been up into the area, kind of nice. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. He might have, move in. <laughs> we have one of this. Well, I think they're all suites. I'm yeah. pretty sure the ones yep. I've been in. Been suites. Yep. So I got my daughter. So she's got a playroom 
Nice. And so it's, oh, it's She's not going to want to leave. So, so, oh my God. <laughs> it's so, so nice. So thank you to, to you guys and them for that. Philadelphia Zoo yesterday and a oh, playroom man. in the Sheridan Suites we, today. My, my daughter loves hippos. It's a very weird animal for her to love. She's only two, so I, I'm kind of chalking up to that. You know, because girl, <laughs> you, like, better, you better they, hope. They like cats <laughs> and things like Yeah, there's nothing yeah. I can do about a hippo. So she saw her first uh, hippos for the first time uh, in person. She's seen tons of videos. But, uh, yeah, we went to Philly and saw the hippos. So then. she has seen them on videos or something. Oh, it's my not God. Something yeah, that, yeah. No, so she likes hippos oh, going into the zoo. We got, like, playlists built on YouTube. She loves Cincinnati has a... a Fiona the hippo she really loves watching but we don't Cincinnati's very far so we don't go there uh, ne needless to say it's a good thing there was a hippo at the zoo there yes. would have been a disappointed little girl yes no we, we actually that was a bonus out. and that's why we went so yeah. it was a wonderful wonderful uh, trip in case you're wondering why uh, Hank Tomsick is all over the place compared to some of the other people, he is in complete control of his rope. He is probably just spinning himself around. He's done this eight times, so he knows what he's doing. Uh, probably of all the people that have gone down, uh, he's the least nervous and uh, enjoying his uh, trip down there. And you do have the opportunity, you know, and we've had heard people talk about this, and I experienced it myself, you know, you don't literally have to scale down with your feet. You can be away from the wall, yeah. and you just let yourself go down slowly. Or if you want to try to get cute or have some fun with it like he was doing, you can kick yourself out and, you know, spin around. And, but the people at the bottom, one of the reasons they have the ropes is so that if you do kick yourself out, you don't go crashing back into right, the building. Right, right, right. And so the, that's the important thing. Everybody's probably been watching this saying, well, geez, these guys at the bottom, anybody can do that. They're just standing there waiting for the person to land and helping them get their gear off. But no, that's not the case. They actually, they, as much as the people up top, probably more than the people up top, have to pay attention because once they leave up top, those people are done. Yeah. Because they're not jostling with the ropes or doing anything like right. that. It's these people at the bottom that are guiding, especially over that last lip, which we've talked about. And you saw there, there is a little lip. But again, you don't have to navigate that yourself. The rope technicians at the bottom there, they pull you away. And so literally that last flight and a half, you are just lowering yourself. Because yeah. you cannot, they will not let you go back into the building. And so, and you can see now that once they're off, that's the technician at the top. Great job again by our camera crew getting that shot. They're bringing the ropes back up and getting them in position so that the next person can go. And that's how they keep this moving. So Hank Tomsick, an eight-timer, done it every year. And Patrick Seidel, a first-timer recruited by Hank. And so that is what they were able to accomplish. This is the live stream of the 2018 Over the Edge event for Special Olympics Delaware. Amy Haywood and Pete Sawyer are getting ready to go. Pete, and this photo is on your left. Amy is on your right. The graphics are up for when they are on the building and you're looking up so that you may not be able to see their face, but you will at least know which body to watch if you've tuned in to see either one of them. Amy Haywood is with the Department of Corrections and Pete Sawyer with the Delaware State Police. Troop 2 Criminal Investigations. He has also been a longtime member of Delaware's Law Enforcement for Special Olympics. He's on the Executive Committee. He has gone before. 
Um, he doesn't like heights, but he's looking forward to doing something that directly supports Delaware's SO athletes. And actually, he has not gone before. Uh, he answered the question a little bit differently than it was posed, but I now see that he has not gone before, and that's why he is looking forward to doing something that directly benefits them. He does a lot for Special Olympics already, uh, but this is a way that he can support them financially by doing something that makes him a little bit nervous if he doesn't like heights. Uh, he says it's about as daring as he gets, so probably the most daring thing that he's done. He wants to thank his family and friends who graciously supported him in raising the funds. Amy Haywood is with the Department of Correction, the Baylor Women's Prison. She is also an agency rep for law enforcement for Special Olympics, and she is also a first-timer. So we have two first-timers going down together there, and she said what she's looking forward to the most is getting down the building without having a panic attack. And so she said, and this was kind of, she was kind of saying this in jest, but it's serious. She's going over the edge because Ann Grunert, who is the executive director of Special Olympics, has a recording of her committing to the event. And she reminded her of that earlier this year. Ha, ha, ha is what she wrote here on the bio. But she is also scared of heights. So we have two people going who are scared of heights. And we've talked about that and how it always amazes me. And I bet, you know, we're going to have 90 people who have done this over the two days at the end of the day. And I bet... 25 of them have told us that they are scared of heights and yet they're still willing to do that. She also participates in the Polar Bear Plunge. She does 5Ks, half marathons, and it's part of the Tippecop event, which we mentioned earlier, where we have police officers who are in the Red Robin stores here in Newcastle County on a designated day, and they sor serve as servers, so to speak. And uh, the tips that they get for being the servers um, are donated to Special Olympics. Amy would like to thank Pike Creek Pub for allowing her to host a guest bartending event in order to raise money for the event. And we talked about that, raising $1,100. Sounds daunting, but what we have found and what we've been told is that when you really do uh, start to look at fundraising for an event like this and you start looking at who you're going to ask and how you are going to do uh, they, you are able to get the supporters for two reasons. One, because it's Special Olympics, and two, because you are doing something that a lot of people are not willing to do. So if you are looking at this and thinking to yourself, geez, I want to do it, not sure if I can raise the money, I can pretty much assure you that if you commit to doing it and you creatively raise the money, whether it's holding your own fundraising event like Amy did, a fundraising event for a fundraising event, or you seek donations, whether it's of small amounts or a few people to give you a large amount, uh, maybe even donate some of the money yourself. There are lots of ways to get to that $1,100. You can sign up so that you can be part of this event next year by going to SODE.org, clicking on the Over the Edge banner, and clicking on the Register for the 2019 event. You put $50 down, it's a deposit to secure your spot, and it goes toward the $1,100 total and then you have the rest of the year to raise $1,050. It's over the event edge 2019. It's always the second Thursday in the month of May. And so sign up today if you're interested and you can get started fundraising right away as we get ready for Amy Haywood and Pete Sawyer to go over the edge. Amy and Pete on their way down, Amy on the left, Pete on the right, both members of law enforcement for Special Olympics Delaware and obviously law enforcement employees here in the state of Delaware. Amy with the Department of Corrections, Pete with the Delaware State Police. The weather has cleared, at least for the time being. We are running ahead of schedule. Amy and Pete were scheduled to go at 1.30 and they actually were going over that edge at about 1.20. And so we are ahead of schedule. Uh, for that and uh, I know a chance of showers later this evening or maybe even early evening and so the over the edge committee and crew and staff here are certainly hoping to try to get everybody in 
Uh, but what does happen if there is a weather delay is it is what it is. It's like going to a baseball game when they put the tarp on. Uh, they'll get the people off the roof. They'll get the people inside from outside. And when the weather clears, whether it's lightning that they stop for or downpours or heavy winds, they'll head back out and they'll finish it up. And the, the one good thing about the weather that we've looked at is it doesn't look like it's going to be an extensive time period of weather. It's going to be a, if it happens. And it's a big if. I think it's 50% chance. It'll be a quick shot. They'll clear everybody in, and then we'll get back out, and we'll still get everybody in by dark. That's the good thing, the fact that we're on the we're on edger number 61. Pete is number edger 61, and we have 90 to go. So we've got uh, whatever, 29 people left to go here today, and it's moving at a pretty good pace uh, here. So we're in pretty good shape as far as that goes. Uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, John Busby, a uh, member of the Special Olympic staff, and joining me is Jimmy Smith. He is the uh, producer of today's live stream broadcast, been part of it every year, actually comes back to us from Cleveland, Ohio for the past two years. Uh, was yeah. a member of the University of Delaware Athletics Department and the videography team there uh, before taking a job out in Cleveland, back to his hometown, him and his wife's uh, hometown. And we're thrilled to have you back in what you call home here in Delaware, Jimmy. Yeah, no, I was telling you about how when we came back, I mean, we spent almost six years here that this place was so special to us because this is where we bought our first home. We, I had my first big boy job. <laughs> we got engaged. Uh, we got married. Uh, we were married home, but we were you high school sweethearts? Yeah. Yeah, well, I thought you yeah, told we me were. that. Yeah, we were. Yeah. And then had our baby. Uh, Lila was born here, so. And that uh, baby's now w walked in here uh, earlier she did. today. She walked <laughs> in here, so she'll be back. Yeah, she'll be back good. when we're done. So, um, this place is just so special to us and. Uh, you guys have been so special to me in my time here and in my time after uh, there in Ohio. So uh, excited to always come back and, and help out however we can. And these guys, um, Brad, Steven, Mike, Richie, Jack, uh, and, and all the ones in the previous years have been so great to work with. And it's fun now with me moving out of state to work with them again because you know, yeah. I was with them so, so much over those times, right. over those years, late nights, early mornings, covering <laughs> things that it's good to come back and, and be with them. So that's uh, personally for me one of the other benefits to this uh, on top of raising money for, you know, an organization that over the, my five, six years of knowing you personally and knowing this organization has really, really grown on me. I have no connection at all. I don't, I don't know anybody personally involved with it. Um, uh, and, and so to me there wasn't a, a natural connection until – you know, I got to meet you and I got to meet the other people in the organization and um, you asked me to work with you guys. And so, you know, it's really grown on me and I'm really, really honored to be connected to it. And you've uh, had the opportunity to meet our athletes through the videos that you put yeah. together uh, for those listening and who have been in some that, of our events. Ball game. That's <laughs> all you need to do is, is meet them and see them and see the parents and hear the stories. It's unbelievable. And a lot of those stories uh, folks have probably seen if you're listening and, and you've been to one of our Night of Heroes events or you've seen some of the videos at Summer Games or at the breakfast that we do, the Champions Breakfast. Those are the productions of, of Jimmy Smith. And uh, it's something that uh, fortunately we've been able to, we're going to, we've invited him to come back and put more videos together for us. And it's an opportunity yeah. that he's going to be able to do. And so we are excited to have the quality that we've uh, come to expect. Uh, from his productions and even though he has uh, moved to Cleveland uh, he's still willing and able to come back not only for this event but for uh, other things as well so we're fortunate for that as you see Amy and Pete have uh, landed or Amy has landed I should say Pete I think is still making his way down he has yet to go over that last lip there we hope they come in to chat with us but uh, two people going over for the very first time and uh, examples of people who have been very involved in Special Olympics Amy with the Department of Justice Pete with the State Police and uh, they've seen firsthand the difference that Special Olympics makes in the lives of people with intellectual disabilities, children and adults of all ages, all abilities, uh, lots of different programming. Go to SODE.org to learn about how you can become involved, whether it's as a coach, a Special Olympics athlete, a unified partner, a volunteer, uh, or if you just want to do one of our fundraising events. We have a lot of signature fundraising events throughout the year. We have our truck convoy uh, where the big rigs ride in a convoy down in Sussex County. That's always in October. 
Uh, we have the Reindeer Run, which is the first Friday in December, a 5K run in Newark. Uh, had over a thousand people be part of that this past year. It's become a big event. Of course, our Polar Bear Plunge, the first Sunday in February. Uh, more than 3,500 people consistently over the last few years have been part of that, and that's pretty much, that has turned into just one of the biggest events, period, in the state of Delaware, whether it's a fundraiser or not uh, for any organization. Our Ride to the Tide was a few weeks ago. Uh, we have a t golf tournament in, in September at Bitterman Golf Course, one of the most, uh, I think it is the most exclusive golf course in the state of Delaware. You basically don't play on that course unless you play with a member if you're not in our golf tournament <laughs> and so it's an opportunity it's kind of like scaling the building you want to do that you got to do it here with us if you want to play bitterman golf course your best opportunity is to sign up to be part of that golf tournament um, our ride to the tide as i mentioned a couple of weeks ago in april and of course over the edge uh, has become one of the signature events there so plenty of ways that people can become involved and that's what special olympics has tried to do over the years is they've tried to provide events that give something for everybody and so if you're a five-year-old child and you want to get back to special olympics you can do the reindeer run you can like my sons do you can do the polar bear plunge like my sons do if you are a daring person and you like thrills then you do over the edge if you're a golfer you've got the, the summer camp golf tournament which benefits the summer camp that we have down at camp Barnes over the years so plenty to do in special olympics all that information can be found at sode Dot org. Don't forget, if you're on social media and you're following today, more than a thousand people, that number's probably even more now, uh, as of about an hour ago, more than a thousand people had tuned in at some point today. I just got a uh, text message from Laurie Mormon down at Banneker Elementary, and she was talking about how the whole school was tuned in uh, to the program. She said, the, we are so proud, the whole school watched. Um, I talked about Laura. I talked about Laurie Mormon's Unified Champion School program. She is the person who has made that happen. There, I met with Laurie. Uh, it's probably been, let's see, her daughter, her older daughter, I believe, is 15 or 16, and she was not yet pregnant with her older daughter. Here's my, I'm starting to feel old moments again, Jimmy. And it's a couple so times. It's today a couple times today, that. and it's we still got a couple <laughs> hours left to go. And uh, but I met with Laurie. And I knew she was gung-ho, and I knew she was going to do a great job. And then six months later, she told me she was pregnant, and I thought, oh, my goodness, we're going to lose her. You know, she's going to have a baby and, you know, not get out of the schools or whatever. Laurie is still here, still going strong. Um, took both her daughters, who are unified partners in Special Olympics, to take part in Hill Day, where they go to Capitol Hill and they talk with our senators and our legislators, uh, representatives, about how important Special Olympics is. And so uh, Laurie has just done a tremendous job down at Banneker Elementary. I talked about how they received the uh, Banner program, one of six schools for our unified champion schools. And they had the two teachers uh, who went over the edge from Banneker Elementary. We're hoping to talk to them. In fact, that was one of the things I texted Laurie. Uh, she said, hey, you know, hey, did they come on? I said, no, let them know. We're waiting for them if they want to come on. So uh, we hope to get them in here to talk about what was their first experience going over the edge. So Banneker Elementary, just one example, we've had a Meadowood school teachers go over. Uh, we've had teachers from other schools go over, and so uh, it's just a way, if you're tuned in and you're watching and you are at a school or your children are at school, what a great way to send somebody over the edge, whether it's the principal, a teacher, a paraprofessional, somebody that works in the lunchroom or in the cafeteria who wants to do this. The school can rally together and raise the $1,100. Again, we don't care how it's raised. It's just the $1,100 that you have to come up with, and I think schools especially have such unique ways that they can do it. Um, you know, whether it's a, hey, wear a hat to school day, and every kid has to pay a dollar to wear a hat to get to school. And, you know, right there, if you're in a school with 500, you've raised half the money that it's required. So just unique ways that people can raise the money to get involved in Special Olympics here. As we're getting ready to send our next person over here, this is Joe Hayes, it looks like. Joe Hayes is going to be going over. And Robert Shutt going to go over on the yellow. So Amy and Pete, as you saw, have landed. And we go over to Rob Schott and Joe Hayes.
for just tuning in. This is the 2018 Over the Edge event to benefit Special Olympics Delaware. On the ropes right now are Joe Hayes and Robert Shutt. And coming up will be Stacy Dedinus, Jay McCormick, Mary Ward Hutchison, Daniel Bowles, and Paul and Sarah Jungling. Also, Rose Dagg, a longtime volunteer of Special Olympics, uh, mom of a Special Olympics athlete. She is actually going to be going over the edge in place of Steve Kaysen. Steve is Stacy Dedinus' husband. Uh, he uh, raised the money to go and was scheduled to go and was not able to make it today at the last minute. Um, Knowing Steve, I'm assuming he got caught up at work, otherwise he would be here. He has gone over the edge before, and I talked to him a few weeks ago, and he was looking forward to the opportunity to do it again if his schedule allowed. Um, and so uh, he graciously has allowed Rose Dagg the opportunity to go over the edge in his place. We've had that happen a couple times over the years where somebody has raised the money to do it um, and has either chosen to let somebody to do it who wanted to do it, which was the case with Danny Hall and one of our Special Olympics interns a few years ago, or in the case of Steve Kaysen, all of a sudden can't do it, but since he's already paid, go ahead and let somebody else go over for you. Rose Dagg has not gone over the edge before. Her husband, Norm, has gone twice. I talked to him earlier today, so Rose getting the opportunity to uh, join her husband in the uh, over-the-edge experience, not at the same time, but certainly something to talk about over dinner tonight now that they both will have gone over. So, again, you have Joe Hayes and Rob Shutt up there on the building. Joe Hayes is on your left. He works at J&J &J Consumer in Fort Washington. He's a volunteer soccer referee for Special Olympics. This is his third time. And why he's going uh, over again a third time, he says, is last year at the event he made a deal with one of the athletes to go again this year. So there he is. He wanted to thank the following supporters to help him raise that $1,100. Mary, Mary Ann, Mike, Greg, the staff and volunteers at DHA, co-workers at Fort Washington, and his wife, Jeanette, Andrew, Patrick, and Ashleen. And so he wanted to give a shout out to those folks. Rob Shutt, who is gonna be coming down on the right once he gets himself going. He works at Capital One. He really has no affiliation to Special Olympics. He says he just wants to contribute to a great thing. He is not a repeat edger, so this is his first time. He says he's looking forward to the rush of rappelling down a building. I've never done anything like this before, he said. Why is he going over? His friend Lori Wiseman did it three years ago, so that is what got it on his radar. Uh, he thinks it's a great chance to raise money for a great cause and get to do something exciting in the process. As far as his daring and crazy activity, <laughs> I stole a hamburger off my friend Bill Krupa's plate before. Anyone who knows Bill knows that's a daring activity right there, almost life-threatening. That's good. We've heard a lot of good ones. That is a <laughs> unique one. He so, so where does that, is that like jumping that, Yeah, yeah well, it depends. I'm not sure, <laughs> I, you know, I don't think you would bite my head off if I stole one of your Oreos, but you didn't leave me any. You ate all six of them. I think that's your uh -oh. bag, or is that not your bag? No, that's it? my bag. I, I just ate four. Yeah, but that's another, oh, okay. No, I'm good right There's now, but I thought you were going to leave me one. All I wanted is no. one. If I open that, I'll eat all six of them. Uh, so I was hoping there would just be one in there. So when you open that and eat five of them, I'll eat the sixth yes. one there. Yes. So uh, Rob Shute wanted to thank his coworkers at Capital One who pushed him to do this as well as made some generous contributions. I'd also like to thank my Wilmington Rugby friends. We're posing for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> who were also integral in the fundraising. Not sure where Rob plays rugby. I have a friend who's a rugby coach, so... I'll ask Rob that if he stops in. Uh, still waiting. I don't think we missed. We didn't miss Rob, right? No, there no, he is. He's leaning over. Look at those clouds. Rob's again. leaning over. That's a great. Uh, that's a great shot. You see the enormity of the building in that yeah. last shot there, uh, from the bottom, lurking their way up. So Joe Hayes finishing up. Rob shut, getting ready to go. If you again coming up is Rose Dagg, Stacy Dedinus, Jay McCormick, Mary Ward Hutchison, Daniel Bowles, and Paul and Sarah juggling. Um, Paul is the parent of a Special Olympics athlete and Sarah is the sibling of a Special Olympics athlete. So several people very entrenched in Special Olympics uh, coming up here in the next six or seven people. We've got a Hall of Famer in Mary Ward Hutchison, uh, Stacy Designus, a longtime Special Olympics volunteer, Rose Dagg, not only a parent uh, but very involved in the, at the committee level in the Newark Dragon area, the Junglings, a family, and so uh, kind That's of kind of neat right? here. 
Uh, yes, yes, yep. yes, very good. Morgan Jungle, yep. Well, she was very involved with the Delaware women's basketball. Oh, yes. During my yes. time. And, and, and she's big on this. social media. She's probably oh, uh, done quite a, uh, a good job social media today with us. Again, if you are on social media, please use hashtag over the edge DE. And sure enough, uh, several people uh, downtown Wilmington, Delaware, has liked something there. Chris Moody and Mrs. Day Jong all tuning in on social media. So we appreciate you uh, sharing pictures you might get or shouting out encouragement to people who are going over. I know they appreciate it. Even if they don't see it right now, they'll see it as they go through their social media once they uh, get home and get settled in. It's 1.40. Uh, we are uh, right on time, maybe even a few minutes ahead of time. The last scheduled rappel is 4.50 at the end of the day, 90 people will have gone over eight went over yesterday as part of media day uh, including two volunteer photographers for special olympics and one of our staff members whose turn it was to go over this year this event is sponsored by td bank brandywine realty trust and newcastle county fire services supporting sponsors include delaware law enforcement for special olympics the sheraton suites in wilmington and the delaware rock gym in delaware we will surpass one million dollars raised in this event, Delmar Broadcasting Company, also one of the sponsors of this event. 222 feet, 17 stories is the rappel. 896,000 raised leading into this year, which as I mentioned, will put us over the $1 million mark, over the edge company. Presented Special Olympics with a nice crystal trophy last night, uh, recognizing that accomplishment of going over the $1 million mark. Some quick Over the Edge Incorporated facts. Again, they are located in Canada or headquartered there. They do events all over North America, not just for Special Olympics, but a lot of different nonprofits. There's one in Philadelphia uh, that does not benefit Special Olympics Delaware, and Maryland is planning on hosting one that would benefit Special Olympics Maryland. We own the rights here in Delaware, so if you want to rappel down a skyscraper in the city of Wilmington, the only way to do that is to sign up for Special Olympics Delaware, and you can sign up for 2019 today. Go to SODE.org, click on the Over the Edge banner, and you'll see the link to sign up for 2019. Over the Edge has helped charities raise over $73 million. More than 52,000 people have gone over the edge. They've been in 360 plus different buildings and produced almost a thousand events just like this. The best part is they've got a hundred percent success rate, not one safety issue in all of those years. So if you're saying to yourself, I would never do that, it's not safe, let me tell you. For something that's as thrilling, and Jimmy and I have talked about things, you know, we asked the people in the bios what are some of the thrilling things you do, exciting things, and we've bantered back and forth about what we would do, what we wouldn't do. I have done this event. Uh, Jimmy has no interest in doing this event. Uh, Jimmy will scuba dive. Marginal I have no interest. interest. Marginal. Oh, we're getting closer. Marginal. Uh, marginal interest in doing this event. Um, Jimmy wants to scuba dive. Oh, I yeah. have no I interest that. in scuba diving. Um, I'll what never jump out of a plane. Cool spears, like a little spear. So dive? you want to hunt while you're scuba diving? Is no, that what I want to be able to defend myself. <laughs> able to How defend yourself. There you go. There you go. Uh, and so lots of different uh, things, uh, unique things we've had people tell us that they want to do or do. Zip lining, one of the more popular ones, especially with the Go Ape uh, course here at Lums Pond. So there, uh, the view that you're looking at is on top of the building. Um, Rob Shutt is still on his way down. He is about halfway down. And so we'll get you back uh, tuned in to him if you tuned in to see him. You saw him going over at the beginning, and there you can see him uh, coming down the rest of the way. Uh, he came down with Joe Hayes. Um, not sure if they were supposed to come down together or not. And he, uh, sometimes we have people that come down together intentionally, whether they're related or friends or what have you. Uh, not sure what the case was here. They both were up there at the same time and coming down together. Uh, but nothing I'm reading on their bio is giving me any indication that they necessarily were coming down together. They both were, uh, and I'm sorry, Rob is the first time person coming down, which might explain why he's coming just a little bit slower. But again, even he is not going slow per se. Uh, we talked about it earlier. You know, my son asked me last night, how fast do people come down? I said, it really does vary. And it really is based on what your comfort level is. And somebody might come down slow because they're not nervous at all. And they're trying to enjoy the scenes and enjoy the sights. And somebody might come down slow because they are a little nervous and they want to take their time. You really don't know until you talk to them. Um, and so people, you know, one thing I've always said, and it used to be when I was out there and I used to MC the event outside before we started doing a live stream, and I would tell people, look, just because they're coming down slow, 
they may want to come down slow and enjoy every second of it. You can't assume be, because they're coming down slow, they're nervous or scared, or even that they're a first timer. In fact, a lot of the people that come down slow, and we've heard this time and time again, when they come in and they say, well, I've done it before, and I ask them, what's the difference? And they say, I took my time this time. I wasn't in a rush to get down. I wanted to take it all in. And there you see uh, Rob Shutt making his final descent there. And so his first trip over the edge is now officially over. And so on our schedule, uh, we're not sure officially who's going next, but if you're just tuning in and wondering uh, who, who has gone recently, Pete Sawyer went, as well as Amy Haywood, Mark Austin, Hank Tomsick, Patrick Seidel, and Corinna Scott. Um, if you're tuned in waiting for Michael Smith to go, um, he is not going over the edge. I was not told why, and it doesn't really matter, just if you're <laughs> hanging on waiting to hear and see Michael go. Uh, we've just been informed that he is not going over. Same with Steve Kaysen. He is not going over as well. And it is Stacy and Rose who are up on the hoists, and that is Stacy Dedinus. She has gone uh, several times uh, her fifth year. And actually, um, a neat story with Stacy and Steve Kaysen is her husband, and Steve was not able to go at the last minute. And so Rose Dagg is the other person you'll see in the photo eventually, and she is going. Steve Kaysen, a few years ago, as an anniversary gift to his wife, and I believe it was an anniversary gift. If it wasn't, it was a birthday gift, surprised her and repelled with her. <laughs> and so he had never gone before. I believe that was the case. And so it was going to be his first time. So she had no thought that he would ever want to do it or whatever. And he surprised her uh, by showing up that day. And, of course, she thought he was just showing up to watch her go down. And all of a sudden, when she went into the training, he came in all geared up, ready to go down with her. So that was kind of, <laughs> you know, you mentioned proposing earlier. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be kind of neat. And that's, that's probably close. as close as we've had to the proposal. It's an uh, anniversary gift. It's there to uh, what have they done Yes. Crazy activities that are really Always good. Impressive. Yeah, so here we go. That's good. I'm glad you brought that up. Whitewater rafting and kayaking in Zambezi. I think that's how you pronounce it. So. Or Zambezi. Zambezi. Mountain climbing, Kilimanjaro. Yeah. It's a bit, little it bit bigger than crazy. Iron Hill in oh, Delaware. Yeah. Right, right. Scuba cool. diving in Indonesia. Some country with the initials ANZ. You a geography person or a... Story? Don't know. In the Caribbean, I know where that is. Although I would not call those things daring or crazy, and that's the difference between me and Stacy Designus and Steve Kaysen. And they've done some other crazy things. That's not the whole list. I think they're the ones that did like the sinkhole spelunking thing. No, I don't think that was them. I don't think it was. But we'll ask them if they come in. She's she said she'll come in and she usually does By like way, to come in and talk. People have been avoiding us for a couple of years. I know, we've got to get on that. <laughs> that's what we're trying to get the uh, people from uh, Banneker Elementary to come in and chat with them. a couple of them in fairness have said had said they didn't want to come on. Oh, for whatever fine. reason, I'm and just, that's fine I'm, too, yeah. I'm but now it's people are probably getting tired of talking about listening yeah, to me talk. Right. And so we'll try to get some other people in here. That's um, what I'm saying. I went more yeah. than just John Buzz. No, for that's right. 10 hours. So do a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, Rose Dagg, we'll get her to come in. She'll come in and talk. Perfect. Uh, and Stacey Dedinus will as well. We can talk to her about her other experiences. They actually lived overseas for several years, so they got to do a lot of this stuff. So um, we are uh, not really the home stretch because we still got three hours of this eight hour broadcast to go but we're getting closer to the home stretch here uh, Stacy by the way has done it uh, this is her fifth year as I mentioned it she and her husband Steve I actually recruited to help with a track meet it's probably been 28 years ago wow. and they're both the type of people now Steve does basically anything we ask him to do and it's kind of like okay we need this done either differently or better the next year who should we get to do it let's have Steve do it yeah, now yeah. I'm talking about our summer games I don't want I, I'm assuming people know what they're talking about but they can't so the summer games um, Stacy has done a lot of different things too and now she is part of the swim committee and does the swim uh, does a lot of the staging and that and type this of thing. is all without a family connection this is all without a family connection um, they do not have children at all not that that matters but they have no connection that I know certainly no family connection just two people how they got involved is they both worked for DuPont DuPont is the sponsor of summer games and so they always have volunteers and they stepped up and were volunteering and somebody said to me this is back when I ran the sports part of summer games hey they'd be good at doing this 
And yeah. what we've found is they're good at doing just about anything you need them to do. <laughs> and so, um, you know, Stacy, the Dinas, uh, and Steve Kaysen, uh, Stacy going down, that's her uh, coming down right now. And then going down in Steve Kaysen's place is going to be Rose Dagg. And I'll talk a little bit more about Rose Dagg and her family's involvement in Special Olympics when you see her coming down the building. She is a first time um, repeller going down. Her husband, Norm, has repelled twice. Uh, and so uh, here you go. You got what you we got your wishes here, Jimmy. Asking you can stop you listening receive. to me, and we have somebody coming in to talk about Special Olympics. So, Joe, how are you? Get that um, get that real close to you. I'm there. doing fine. How was your uh, repel? Real good. Yeah, real good. Was yeah. it your first time? I forgot your third. Okay, let me fire your, your third time. Yes. Oh, here we go. You're a volunteer soccer re referee for Special Olympics. Yes. Where where do you do that at the Fall Festival or yeah, the Fall Festival? Yeah. And how'd you get involved in that? Uh, back in, I guess, 2010, 2011, they uh, put out a notice through our group that they needed some rest for the fall festivals. I went out and did it for half a day. So. And so you are, are you a certified ref for a yes. league or something? What what level do you ref? Uh, Meaning I, youth, high school? or I refed all the way up to college. Oh, wow. So, so Don't do that anymore, but I refed that high up before. So. Wow. And so... Com you know, the, spe the Special Olympic soccer game, there, you know, there's some similarities, there's some differences. Um, as a referee, as a very experienced referee at every level, what do you enjoy most about refereeing for Special Olympics? Uh, when I see that camaraderie between them, you know, mm -hmm. something go, you know, somebody scores for the other team, they cheer. And, you know, a couple years ago I was doing one game where uh, this one kid, wasn't doing much. Mm -hmm. One athlete wasn't doing much. So even the other team moved out of the way so he can score a goal. And so the you know the pure sportsmanship, sportsmanship. is probably That's the, word the best looking. word for yeah, it. Sportsmanship. Uh, it says here on your bio you gave us that last year somebody uh, you made a deal with an athlete that you'd go again this year. Yes. And you held true. I did. Is that I athlete here today? You know, I didn't see him. No. no. His, his, I know his first name is Brian. I didn't get his last name. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I seen, don't think there's a Brian here. The athletes yeah. that I've seen here, not a yeah. Yeah. He was Brian. volunteering here last year. So. Oh, and good. I, and okay. I see him and his buddies at the Blue Rocks all the time. So. So, did you make any deals with anybody for next year yet, <laughs> or, do I, or do I should get a, get an athlete in here to make that deal with you? <laughs> I'll have to think about next year. <laughs> well, we, we, listen, sure. we appreciate you. You know, we yeah. always talk. We've talked about people who have come in and done it more than once, and we've you know repeated the. $1,100 amount several right. times. But again, somebody like you now, you've raised more than $3,300 for Special Olympics Delaware for simply, and I use air quotes <laughs> as, as if people can't see me on the air, coming down the side of the building. And so on behalf of the 4,200 athletes, including Brian, who've convinced <laughs> you to come back this year, thank you for all you do for Special Olympics. And thanks for volunteering as a soccer official. We take great pride in having the best officials for our athletes because we deserve the best. And so it's great to hear that somebody like you who's coached at the college or refereed at the college level is helping out at Special Olympics. Yep. So thank you very thanks, much, Joe Hayes, yep. going over the edge for the third time, maybe a fourth next year. But if not, Joe, thanks for all you do thank for you. Special Olympics. All right, Stacy Dedine is on the left and Rose Dagg on the right. Uh, as I was talking to Joe, you were able to see Rose getting her last minute instructions, a first timer. Uh, going over the edge. She's been on the uh, ground. She's volunteers at this event. Her son, Steve Dagg, who's an athlete in Special Olympics, he's one of the athletes who helps out up in the check-in area uh, or escorting people up once they uh, sign in down here in the lobby and then work their way upstairs. And so you can see, uh, you can see there that Rose has gotten over that uh, first lip. And, you know, if there's a tricky part, Jimmy, and I know this firsthand and from talking to people, it's that once you... The, the hardest part, everybody will tell you, is leaning back yep. and getting that feeling that, okay, now I am at the mercy of the rope. I'm no longer supporting myself with my own two feet or on my knees or on my rear end. It's the rope that's holding me up. And so then you, you get going, and then you've got to take a little bit of a step over that ledge. I'm going to say it's probably about two feet, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're 222 feet up in the air, every foot counts. And so you have to take that step from the cement part of the building sort of onto the window. And yeah. then once you get there, then it's really just a matter of lowering yourself. And you see it here, and it doesn't look like a ton, but that's, you know, also 200 feet away. <laughs> it's probably a lot because, I don't know, just the physics of everything. You're also da you're facing down. And yeah, so what is that, maybe two, three feet at the most yep. away from the glass? Yeah. Yep. Maybe not even that. I'm yeah. bad at distances. 
but you're right. I'll feel like a mile as <laughs> you're, you're coming down. Right, especially when you just get going. It's like, all right, I'm going, yeah. I'm going. Whoop! Now, and and the text, it's not a surprise. They tell you, look, here's here's what's going to happen. Yep. You're going to be on this cement, and you can see it there. And then you're going to have to sort of take a step yep. back to the glass. And then once you get down there, and you can see where Stacy is on the left, it's kind of smooth sailing for a while there. Whether you decide to tiptoe down the glass. Uh, you see the 10th floor where everybody's checking in. There's a sign so you know that you're there. You wave, they wave to you. And then you kind of tiptoe down, and then you get to the second story, which Stacy's approaching. And then the people at the bottom, the rope techs at the bottom, they pull you out. And so that and then at that point, you literally are just lowering yourself down there. And you can see uh, Stacy is probably right now, she's probably on about the fifth floor. So she's probably got about four more floors to go before she gets pulled out. Uh, Rose is probably approaching that 10th floor spot where they have a sign up that, and the sign actually says smile you're almost <laughs> halfway and uh, so, so it's kind of uh, something that it gives you kind of a sense of where you are you heard Danny Hall well you did probably if you're tuned in now you didn't hear Danny Hall back at nine o'clock this morning when right. he stopped in and he's one of the ones that he says I don't look down he says I get over that edge and I look straight ahead and Danny's one of the ones that's done it all eight years um, and then you have a new timer like Rose or a first timer. It'll be interesting to talk to her to see, you know, did you actually enjoy it? Did you look down? She did look nervous up at the top, <laughs> but everybody, everybody's nervous. And you've heard people in here who have done it several times uh, who have said that they are still nervous. And I know I'd be nervous. I've, I've done it. It didn't bother me. I was fine with it. But I know if I'm going to scale a 222-foot building, I'm going to have a little bit of nerves when I get there at the top. There you see the uh, what they call the ground training that goes on, where they go everything that you're doing, everything that you're going to experience, everything that can happen. And when I say everything, the only thing that really happened is you lock up for going too fast. And then they quickly unlock you after that. And so um, they do all that training. You get to get the feel coming off the side of the building there. That's what that ladder's for. They actually, cl you climb up that ladder and you kind of hang and get the sense of, okay, this is what my harness is going to feel like on my body when I'm hanging. And then you go through the steps, and there's that last uh, lip I was telling you about. Good job by our camera crew getting that. And that's Stacy Dodinus landing uh, for the fifth time here at Over the Edge. So, again, you look at the dollar amount. Stacy has now raised, just in this event, more than $5,000. Her and her husband, Steve, also do the polar bear plunge and contribute financially in other ways. And so, you know, that's where you really, when you think of the enormity of this event, of the amount of ra money individuals have been able to raise over the eight years. We talked about the three people that have done all eight years, how collectively they've raised almost $30,000 for Special Olympics. And, and, and you know, that that's a corporate sponsorship. You know, that's a premier sponsorship sure. in a lot of organizations. Yeah. And so that's kind of a, a really neat thing. So, uh, And Rose, has, is that Rose? Yeah, Rose has landed quickly. So Rose started out uh, slow, and once she got going, she just kept coming. So Rose is also down. Uh, Stacy Dodinus and Rose Dag. Rose has been a longtime volunteer for Special Olympics. She's been a coach. She's been a sport director. She's very active in the Newark Dragons Area Committee. Uh, Rose is the type of volunteer, the type of person where if you want something done or need something done, you call her and she figures out how to get it done. Uh, her son Steve Dag has been involved in Special Olympics. Um, they support the plunge. They support, if they're not in a fundraising event, they usually support it by coming out to it. Uh, but they're in just about every event they can be in. Uh, they do the reindeer run. They do the plunge, as I said. Uh, they used to be involved in the plane pull back when we did that event. And so just a real committed family to Special Olympics. Uh, stepping up that commitment one more way here with Rose having the opportunity to repel courtesy of Steve Kaysen, who had to back out at the last minute uh, because of work issues. Let me ask you this question from, from your perspective. And... This may be a Homer question, and you'll probably give a Homer answer. <laughs> How does it feel to be a part of Special Olympics Delaware? The, the caveat and the preface to all this is that it's the second smallest state in the United States, but has a premier plunge event, a premier over-the-edge event, and was the beginnings of the Unified Sports Program. Right. Did you even put into words what power a small state could have in this space we we always look at it as it's a huge advantage to be a small state because it gives us the opportunity to really be to really be at the grassroots level you know the larger states at no fault to themselves the way it is you know when you talk about the state of texas 
there's stuff that goes on in Texas that's related to Special Olympics that the state office doesn't even know about. I mean, it's impossible. You know, yeah. Texas is a state you take planes around, you know, right, right. <laughs> and you don't drive anywhere in Texas. You go by plane. And so, you know, we firmly believe here in Delaware that we have a unique opportunity. Sure, being a small state has its disadvantages. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you're tripping over each other. Organizations are tripping over each other, asking for funds to support really the same. You know, there's a lot of organizations that uh, benefit people with intellectual disabilities. And we're all asking the same companies for the yeah. same money. We just do different things. You know, yeah. we do sports. And so uh, those are some of the disadvantages. But we think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages because we have an opportunity. You know, and a perfect example is, I've known a third of the people who went over the edge today, and yeah. that doesn't happen in the bigger states. For sure, yeah, you, know, you, you didn't have to I, reference I, I don't know, much. yeah, I don't need to read about them because I know who they are. And so that is a big advantage because we know the personalities, we know the talents of the people. The example I gave with Steve Kaysen, how yep. we switch him around to a different thing at summer games every year because we know yep. he can do it. And that's because we've gotten to know him over the years. And so, you know, so we it's firmly it's quality of interaction. It's that exactly, it's exactly. And, and, and that's what we always say is important, you know, that we need to be out, we need to be seen, uh, we need to be out in the community, we need to be at our practice sites, we need to be out at the competitions, and we need people to see, you know, we need to talk to people so that we know what they need. You know, we, we, we do surveys. What are we doing well? What can we improve on? Yeah. Um, we are our own biggest critics. Yeah. Not because we do a lot of stuff wrong, and when I say we, the, I mean the organization, but because we always want it to be better. And so the first thing we'll do Monday morning is review this event. Yeah. What can we do differently from top to bottom? Were there enough bagels this morning for the volunteers as they arrived, all the way up to when we were taking stuff down at 6 o'clock or whenever that happens, where there's something that we missed or there's something that we need to do differently yeah. and that type of thing. And so... Uh, you know, it, it's been a tremendous experience. I'm getting ready to head into my 30th year here in a lot of different roles is, is to see it grow. And, and I've mentioned a couple of times I've joked about how I feel old because I was talking to Connor Watson's mom who just graduated from high school, Connor, and I knew Connor when he was eight years old. You know, Steve Dagg, whose mom Rose just went. I've known Steve for 30 years. You know, I've known Steve when he was not as young as your two-year-old daughter that came in, but pretty darn close. And so, you know, watching the evolution of the program and people never settling. And when I say people, we're talking about the board, the staff, and most importantly, the volunteers, the coaches. Yeah. They want more. Um, we now do mid-season tournaments. That's unheard of in a lot of states. Yeah. And we do mid-season tournaments, which means more time, more money, more energy that's required. Yeah. And every single person involved in those tournaments, that's what they want because ultimately it benefits the athletes. If our athletes come to summer games, having more competition experience than they did the year before, they're going to be better prepared yeah, to compete. Absolutely. And, and so. in the places I've lived in my life, other than Delaware, Special Olympics isn't as prominent or, or it's not as celebrated as it is here. I mean, I did put myself in a situation here at Delaware to be involved in this, but also working at the university. I mean, your guys' building is across the street. Right. So, yes, I did have an opportunity to run into a Special Olympics event here mm -hmm. and there. But being in Ohio, and, and I spent my grad school years in Mississippi, I'm not even sure if they have a program <laughs> in Mississippi. They do. Maybe not where you were, but they do. Yeah, but, yeah, you, but know, you didn't it, know. You didn't I know never about came it. across it. Right. Now, here, it, it, it's all around me and the people I know. And right. So there's a little more to it. So sure. I'll, I will give you that. But I think that small state thing and the way you explain it is, is exactly it. Yeah. How do you take that? Because there's a threshold of how many people you can have involved. Right. You know, you can't have Texas numbers involved because basically the population right. here. It's not going to happen, right? But how do you have better relationships right. instead of just a number of yeah. relationships? And we always, and, and, and that's preached in our organization from the top down, from the board to our executive director, through the staff, down to our volunteers, whether they're uh, area people or, or school people, is uh, we always talk about quality more than we talk about quantity. Yeah. You know, it's great to boast that we have 140 schools, but what are those 140 schools doing? Are yeah. they doing quality things? And if they're not doing quality things, how can we get them to that point? And if they're doing three things, but they could be doing five, how do we get them to that five? Well, the and unified thing is a great example. Mm -hmm. You start with, with whatever you started with, one right. or two. Yep. And now it's a much larger organization, and that was in the grand scheme of things pretty right. quick. Pretty quick, yep. 
and so now it's a the unified program is, is worldwide. Uh, speaking, speaking of experience and volunteers, that's Mary Ward Hutchison that you see uh, right now, one of our Hall of Famers, so the uh, second Hall of Famer to go down today, Marie McIntosh earlier today. Uh, speaking of unified, the reason Mary Ward Hutchison is in the Hall of Fame, one of the many reasons, is because she was one of the ones, one of two people, Mary Moore being the other, who started Unified Sports here in Delaware. She was a very big proponent of that, still was throughout her teaching career. She retired a couple years ago, and now she is the area director, uh, which is a part-time position for Special Olympics Delaware for the MOT Tigers. And so she is at the, always. she has always been at the grassroots level and has enjoyed her role there. Um, she's as experienced uh, in Special Olympics as anybody in the state, and she does the uh, spread out and pose picture up there. Uh, she is on your right, and uh, she, her kids were involved in Special Olympics. Her husband's been involved as a volunteer. Uh, Mary's been a Newark ski coach. She's coached uh, as a as a adaptive physical education teacher in first up here at the Bush School in Wilmington, right down the street from where we're at. But then she spent the best part, the better part of her career, meaning years wise, uh, with the Appaquinimic School District as the district's first. Uh, adaptive physical education teacher. She was the first adaptive physical education teacher in the Appaquinimic School District and just created a program not only from a physical education standpoint but from a Special Olympics involvement that has been a uh, tough act to follow. They've done a very good job following it uh, but it is one of those ones that when they hired her replacement uh, they had to make sure that they were going to be able to get the quality from that person that they got from Mary Ward Hutchison. And, you know, it's funny, a couple years ago I asked her, I said, you know, I'm surprised you haven't done this over the edge thing because she races mountain bikes. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Jay McCormick. Mary, um, I just glanced down at the sheet real quick, but Mary does bike. That's how I know yeah. she's at least a biker. But she skis. She's very athletic. She's a runner. Um, and so I, I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm surprised you haven't done this yet. And she always, you know, she always says, well, you know what, I would have to take a day off from school to do it. So she said, so maybe when I retire, and here she is uh, going over the edge for Special Olympics Delaware. Somebody said here on our sheet that they think it's her birthday. And so I'm hoping she'll come in. I asked her to come in and talk to us, and I'm hoping she will. Uh, come in and do that so we can find out what uh, really inspired her to do this other than the athletes. We were talking about um, Unified Sports. Why mm -hmm. don't you, for those that are watching that maybe don't know, explain a little bit about that and the opportunities because I think that's another one of those gateway opportunities, much like the plunge or this, where you can be involved in it and it's not, you don't have to have any connection. No, right, yeah, and you can still play sports. And, yep. and Unified Sports is sports people for people with and without intellectual disabilities. And so to use an example of a sport going on right now, unified softball, it's five people with disabilities in the field and five without at different positions. And depending on the level, there are some rules about, you know, you, if you're, if you're going to pitch, you got to be able to defend yourself, just like there should be, and, and there yep. is in every little league. But other than that, you know, a unified partner can pitch, they can catch, a Special Olympics athlete can pitch and catch, can play the outfield all around. And the whole idea of unified sports is for people to come together and eliminate stereotypes that might have been in existence or to prevent stereotypes that may never have been known. And I always, when I talk to groups, I use the example of ice hockey. Yeah. You see kids, us adults who, I don't know whether you ice skate or not, I, I skated yeah. late when I started coaching one of my son's yeah. teams. but. As an adult, and I would see a five-year-old skating, I would think, gee, how do they do that? And how they do it is they get up on skates and they go because they don't know if I fall, this is going to happen, and this and this and this. Yeah. You and I go into it like, geez, all, here's 15 bad things that can happen, and so I'm not going to do it. It's the same thing with stereotypes. If kids from the beginning are around kids of all abilities, all backgrounds, all races, they don't know any different. They know each other as kids, and that's all they know. And that's what Unified Sports does, is it brings people together with and without disabilities. And Cesar Rodney High School, which is where Jay McCormick teaches at, is one of the leaders, another banner program in the Unified Champion School program that I mentioned. This was his first time going down. He was looking forward to the thrill and to get his adrenaline pumping. He wanted to thank the community of Cesar Rodney High School. It's a great day to be a rider, which, of course, is their nickname. He races mountain bikes and he does cyclocross on a regular basis in the summer and fall. When he was living in college out west, he used to jump off of, of 10 to 20 foot cliffs while skiing. Okay, <laughs> that's a first. Now you're just off taking two things and adding them and together. Adding them, yeah, right, <laughs> would you ever ski and then would you ever jump? I have, not, I have never skied. 
And it's not because I didn't have an interest. It's not that I don't think I could. I never skied growing up because my family wasn't skiers. And then by the time I got to high school, I was a basketball player, so you weren't allowed to ski during the winter. I went to college, and, of course, Delaware is not a place where you go skiing. And none of my immediate friends there were skiers. Long story short, I'm now 51 years old with knee problems. I'm not going to ski, but I am going to expose my children to it at a young age. I don't think even if I had skied, I would be doing 20-foot cliffs. Yeah. Yeah, to me, that's a disaster waiting to happen. How tall is this? That's probably about 20 feet. Cause yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you and I, I are six I feet tall. So. It's probably yeah, three of us. So. so I don't think I'd be going no. off there. No, I don't yeah. think so. 10 feet, maybe. That's what he does. 10 to, 20, 10 to 20 feet is what he says. So anyway, I hope he stops in so we can talk to him more about that. He has landed. Jay McCormick, Mary Ward Hutchison, still up on the building. Looks like she's about a third of the way down. And uh, they were scheduled to go at 2 o'clock, and it is 2.10 now, so they are pretty much right on schedule. Daniel Bowles coming up, Paul and Sarah Jungling, Tammy Wilson, Mike Wooden, Jim Long, and Sheridan Long coming up here at the Over the Edge event 2018. Right now we are, uh, they were the 67th person to go down. We've got to get to 90 today, so we've still got 23 to go. Uh, just pulled up the radar and refreshed it they are expecting storms uh, around five or six o'clock which if we stay on schedule which i don't see any reason why we wouldn't we will be finished an hour before that uh, looking at the radar there are some glimpses of green out in the harrisburg area uh, which could be heading this way but we've already had two glimpses of green go through and they played right through that or repelled right through that i should say um, again safety always the number one priority but as long as the security folks at the top or, or the safety supervisors i should say at the top deem that it is safe to continue uh, they do continue to to go and uh, if there is the delay there is the delay and like at a baseball game they put a tarp on it which means we bring everybody inside and then we head back outside uh, to finish it up but we're hoping that that's not the case uh, people are scheduled times we want them to go over the time they're scheduled um, and of course for a lot of our volunteers and obviously your broadcast crew we've been here for uh, since early morning do we have to roll the tarp over the building? That, <laughs> that would take a long time. <laughs> that would slow things down for sure. Merriward Hutchison coming down to the landing area. We are located right behind that sign in a room. We actually can't see out, hey. which we often wish we could, uh, but we can't. But that is where we are located for today's broadcast. We came on the air quarter to nine. Nancy Johnson of the Wake Up Crew, WSDW, rappelled down the side of the building. First time she's ever done that. She told me a few years ago she would never do it. She supports Special Olympics in a lot of ways, including doing the polar bear plunge every year. But she was uh, pretty dead set she was not going to do this. And then this year she decided she would. And she did. And she came in and uh, talked about it afterward and uh, really had uh, said she, she enjoyed the experience, I think is the words that she used uh, in describing her uh, descent down the 17-story building. So if you're in the area, come over and check things out. Like I said, we got 23 more people to go. Even if you don't know anybody going, it's a fun thing to see live. We hope you're getting certainly a good sense of it from this live stream of the uh, different things, the different angles. The angle you're seeing now is basically the party downstairs. You can see the crowd, uh, the TD Bank hosting the party. That is what happens at the top there when you are in sort of what I call the tripod or the lacrosse goal and that is Daniel Bowles who is getting ready to go down he works at Corriton Fitness he looks like he look, works at a fitness place he's a actually bit. a coach for Special Olympics for track and field bowling swimming bocce and powerlifting actually he says he's a former coach so he must not be coaching anymore he is a first time edger so going over for the first time he's looking forward to the adrenaline rush and the scenic bird's eye view of wilmington a great way to support special olympics he's a hiker and a rock climber and has a class a license in skydiving so apparently skydiving is more than just jumping out of a plane and pulling a cord i love how he says he has the license but he doesn't mention how many times he's done <laughs> it or any of those things so now i wonder if that means you can you can be, you know how they have the tandem jumpers? Yeah, so he I wonder if that means he would be my attachment. Not that I'm doing But that means that he's skydived maybe once or twice <laughs> right, or right. 10 or times, right. we'll say. We don't know what that 50 is. times. And again, the uh, hiker I do, I'm a hiker, not a lot, but I can hike. Rock climber 
is the uh, is the uh, term that I have said time and time again that I would never be interested in, in going to yeah. do would be a rock climber. And so uh, that is one of those adventurous things. But Class A skydiving, that's something that we hope uh, we get Daniel Bowles in here to talk about. And we're uh, joined here in the production room by Scott I've been Scott smiling Selheimer. ever since that door opened. Scott, uh, the former sports information director at Delaware, he was actually on this broadcast a couple years talking about whether or not he would be interested in going over the edge. His wife went over. Uh, she went over the edge a couple years ago. Grab uh, the mic. Scott, what are you doing? Scott, now the historian for it's the University live. of Delaware. Oh, it's live, baby. Uh, Scott, you said you were going to stop by. Uh, we got a couple slots available. I can make a couple phone calls. Well, you know, I got to get back into Newark <laughs> in a little bit, but I did <laughs> promise to go. I did promise to go down. Uh, as we spoke the other day, I, I did not. Sp I don't know. I don't think I specified a specific year. Uh, I have to say, you did not. So specify the that. history is still ahead of me. So <laughs> that uh, so it will happen at one day. Although, boy, coming in and looking up, boy, it seemed, a, it seemed when I was talking to you the other day, it seemed a lot more doable than when I just walked in. But uh, and you were here when your wife did it, right? She and she, she did enjoyed it. it. She enjoyed it. Yep, she yeah, enjoyed it. I mean, she didn't. She did yep. admit that it was one of the scarier things she did, but. Uh, for a great cause, and and your wife is an example of a principal who right. went over uh, and her school, I think, helped yep. raise the money. And or, mm -hmm. I'm not sure the logistics of that, but um, we, we've talked about how we've had several teachers who have gone over and their schools have gotten behind it. So people who are in schools or want to get their schools involved, it's a great way to do it. Yeah, it's a great way. And I, she, uh, one of her uh, co-workers, a teacher at the time, Tabitha Harris, whose daughter's oh, involved yeah. in Special mm -hmm. Olympics. Uh, has done it several times. She's also a, a frequent polar bear plunger. Yep. Um, so uh, as I did polar bear plunge many years ago yep. as well. Yep. Um, Maybe we'll have you and Jimmy go down over the edge together. I've got Jimmy from I'm never doing it to what was the term you used? Possible. It was. That wasn't even Marginally, possible. I think, yeah, I think you went from zero percent to one percent. But yeah, my my polar bear plunging. I always vowed to do it again, but my it's not the cold anymore. It's the uh, abnormally large paunch that I have put on <laughs> since then that does not allow me to have my shirt off <laughs> around people because I don't think that would be fair you, to that's people what it is. to the public. See. You can Come you can on. wear a shirt. Nobody yeah, keeps but track. Sh wearing shirt makes it even harder. <laughs> it is because it gets wet, wet and then it's on and it's <laughs> right. tough to get off. Yeah. But uh, so when I whenever I slim down, <laughs> I am back in. at the plunge. <laughs> Maybe that's a factor. I can't do this either. I don't want the building to fall down <laughs> with me. <laughs> With me, yeah, I bet you I am. You treat it like the donkey ride that you told me about. I could treat it like the donkey ride down the Grand Canyon. Yeah, you got to cut what, twenty pounds? Well, back then I had to cut twenty. Yeah. Now it's now substantially it's not more. Not that much. It's twenty-one. Uh, keep going north. <laughs> by a lot. Yep. Making a uh, change of uh, batteries here in the headset, so that's the delay that you saw. And it's still a little bit of noise in the background as Daniel Bowles has just finished up as we are in the 2 o'clock hour. So we got through five hours of the broadcast with the same batteries. Talking to Scott Selheimer, the former sports information director, now the historian for the University of Delaware part-time, also the executive director of the Delaware Sports Museum and Hall of Fame, their big event coming up next week. And so we are in the latter part of the uh, event here, uh, the Over the Edge for Special Olympics Delaware. And to see who the next person uh, coming up is going to be. You can see there at the top of the roof. Looks like there's uh, training going on. Oh, so this is a rope check. We can continue our interview with Scott Selheimer. Scott, tell us a little bit about the uh, Delaware Sports Museum Hall of Fame. And the reason I bring that up is uh, we have an athlete, Renee Baldwin, who was in 
uh, in the Hall of Fame, Special Olympi uh, in your Hall of Fame, and also uh, Len Lesham, one of our longtime volunteers who is in our Hall of Fame, also uh, a member of the Sports Museum Hall of Fame. And you've got an event coming up next. Uh, yes. Is it next week? Yes, our, our, it's actually the 22nd, Tuesday the 22nd of May at the Chase Center. So we have nine, in, nine inductees going in that, uh, as you said, there's some Special Olympics in there. And one of the things we really pride ourselves in is the diversity of, of some, you know, you have you have people who are skeet shooters, people in karate, <laughs> Special Olympic athletes. Len, I think, is in for race walking, I believe. Uh, actually, triathlon. Triathlon. And, yeah. But we have a race walker in there and things like that. So yeah. um, so really, it's a diversity of, of uh, people in there and nine new candidates going in um, in two weeks. And, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I, again, I just pretty much started. I was going to say, you're first as executive yeah, director. Right. I'm sure you've I, been to several. Yeah, we've had several. We've been lucky enough to have a lot of University of Delaware people in there, but my first is kind of... Exec director, I've been sharing with Don Volch, who's done it the last five years. He's going to step away um, later. So I'm excited about that, and it's keeping me busy. And Can people still forward get to tickets? Uh, yeah, tickets will be uh, online at desports.org. Okay. Um, you can go there to, I believe, to the 15th. Is okay, where, so through, uh, through the weekend. Yeah, so through the weekend, um, early on the next week. Um, get on there, 65 hours apiece. Um, it really helps sustain our our uh, our, um, our hall and, and right. the things that we do during the year. and. Um, admission to the hall is free. It's right down the first baseline uh, of Frawley Stadium. So if you're a, a Delawarean who loves sports and loves history, it's a good place to visit. It is. It's a neat place. Uh, I've been there several times. I need to come back. My boys want to come back. My wife and uh, the boys stopped by one time. And you're, you're, you know, you're not open 40 hours a week, obviously. And uh, but they want to come back. And I'm always and every time I go in there, I see something I didn't see the time before. Not necessarily because it's new, but because there is so much stuff in there. You wouldn't think there's that much sports history in Delaware, but there is. Yeah, there is. And, and actually, it's funny because I was just down here in the city today there talking about what things we can do to keep it, keep getting it updated and things right. like that. We're kind of in a finite space. So there's that yeah. thing of trying can to only do put so new much. things <laughs> right. without taking away old things. Right. But I agree. If you go through there and really go through a museum like I like to go through a museum, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of fun things yeah. you can be up there. Like I said, like I was at the Cooperstown a couple years ago, mm -hmm. and I think my son and I were in there for like six hours. <laughs> right. My wife wanted to kill us because <laughs> I, I read everything at a museum, <laughs> right. and there's a lot, lot there uh, to see. Yeah, and one of the things I like about this museum is you need more than 15 minutes. I mean, you need to be in there at least an hour to see everything, but it's not a six-hour commitment. Oh, not at no, all. No. You, know, you can see yeah. the whole thing in less than two hours. Yeah, we have an introductory film that that, that uh, it's about seven minutes. That kind of gives you basically an overview right. of sports in Delaware. Then you go through it. It's, it's, uh, it's um, designed by years and then later by sport. So you can see a lot of people. And I think there'll be a lot of people that people didn't know. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a Delawarean or right. you know, she was a Delawarean or she was an Olympian or something right. like that. Yeah. So, That's great. Um, yeah, so we're, um, we're hoping it to I'm hoping that I can do enough to make it bigger and better and draw more people and keep it going strong. No, that's great. What's the website again? For it's desports.org. So whether you're interested in going to the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony next week, the 15th, uh, you can get the tickets up the, to the 15th. Right, 15th event is the 22nd. 22nd. Or just learning more about the Hall of Fame itself, the hours and that type of thing. Uh, tune into that website to find out. Scott, appreciate you stopping appreciate by. You, uh, you helping me appreciate me plugging the, my new venture there and, and, and going there. But it's always great to come in and see Jimmy and make making the trip yeah, east. And I'm going to let you guys uh, catch up off the air yeah. if you want. And I'm going to bring in Rose Dagg, who just uh, landed after her first uh, first one. So, Scott, if you want to talk to her about what it's like to go to over for the first time, so that when you do it at one of these years, you'll be in good shape to go. You'll be ready to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your wife is trying to get you. Rose, have a seat here. Pull that microphone up close there so we can talk to you. Uh, Rose Dagg, we're, going, we're in the middle of a rope check. Uh, and that's why uh, we had a chance to, uh, nice surprise, Scott Selheimer, a longtime supporter of Special Olympics in his roles at the university. He, uh, anytime we ever asked him for something or needed something, they've treated our athletes at their games, and uh, he always makes sure things get uh, done there. And so uh, we appreciate him stopping by. Rose, uh, pull that real close to you so we can hear you. You're, uh, you got to go over, and, I, you know, the biggest advantage you had is you didn't lose any sleep over this because no, you didn't know you were going over until you got here today. How did all this happen? I was just upstairs and told my husband I thought I would do it next year. I right. really like the plaque, so uh -huh. I said, I think I'll do it. <laughs> Walked out there to see the Gary and asked Gary, and Gary goes, says, sure, Rose, I'll support you next year. And all of a sudden, Stacia, an over-the-edger, was going over, and her husband, something happened at work, and he couldn't yep. get out of work. So he, so she goes, oh, please go in his place. 
There you go. So I literally had five minutes to make a decision, <laughs> and of course the staff upstairs had all the paperwork ready for That's me. That's right, ready to go. <laughs> now we were watching. We have the the views we have are when you first are up on the ledge doing, and even the training. We didn't see you going through the training, but we saw you up on the ledge. You looked a little nervous, as mm -hmm. anybody does. And we've talked to people here where you're sitting who have done it two years, five years, eight years, and they said, you know what? You still get nervous. I've only done it the once, and I was nervous. Wasn't scared. I was nervous. And even though I've gone through it once, I know if I was doing it again, I would be nervous again. But then all of a sudden, you were on the ground. So you went quick. You started out slow, and then you flew <laughs> from that point on. I didn't think it was. <laughs> you might not have thought it, but for somebody who's gone down, and we always say you can't really judge somebody how quickly they go, whether they're nervous, scared, because uh, sometimes you're just taking your time. Some people just want to take their time and enjoy Correct. it. Uh, but you went down quick. What was the hardest part of the experience? I guess just standing upstairs, waiting my turn. <laughs> <laughs> Once you knew you were going. When, what time did you find out you were going? Oh. Like early or no, an no, hour no. ago? No, no, no. Probably whatever time I went down is probably, what, 20 minutes 20 or minutes so? 20 minutes before, before that. that. So you literally yeah, yeah, yeah. just found oh, out. I, I didn't know whether it was something that... Steve knew at six o'clock this morning he wasn't coming. Or no, no, no. I don't even know who Stacy was. She yeah. knows my son. Oh, okay. We just met, so now we said that we're BFFs. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, she's a long time volunteer. summer games volunteer. Yes, moved yes, away, or they moved overseas for about ten years, but they were back when I first started thirty years ago. They were part of summer games and still now are back involved. Awesome. You, you're a mom of a Special Olympics yes. athlete, a longtime volunteer in a hundred different roles, and one of these people as I described you on the air. If we need something done and done well, we call Rose Dag, and it somehow she Thank figures you. out how to get it. What a Special Olympics meant to your life. You know, you're involved, your husband Norm's involved, and obviously Steve does just about everything you can do in Special Olympics. Yes, he does. He, other, he hasn't gone over the edge, but no, he plunges. No. He's in the reindeer run. He used to do the plane pole, I think. Yes, Wasn't he yes, part of that team? Yes. Uh, you know, and does just torch anything run, if he can he do a torch whatever, run, whatever, whatever he wants. Whatever. Been involved. Uh, over 25 years. 25 years. So, and still more very involved active. than you. Well, actually, you were very involved back then. We just right. didn't offer as much, uh, or you would have been in everything. Um, how how has Special Olympics made such a tremendous difference in Steve's life, and then ultimately in your lives? It's just a, it's his social time. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why we usually don't tell him no to go anywhere because it is social for him where he doesn't have the ability to jump in a car and go someplace like we all could jump in a car and go visit people. Right. So, and plus, you get to meet the most coolest people and the families and you sit there and you build a bond with families and you become a family and we call ourselves a family. Right. You're not really friends anymore, you're family. Mm -hmm. And that's how I am with everybody. Sorry. That's no, okay. <laughs> but the staff... I would, I would do anything, just like today, I guess. I'll show that <laughs> yeah, I would do anything. Go down a building. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh -huh. you know, it's, it's dear to our heart and to my other two children the same way. Right. And we just love it, you know. Well, we appreciate all that you do for 25 years or have done and will continue to do probably for another 25 years. And now you've gone over the edge. Yes. Norm told me he's not going to do it again. No, he's done no, it twice. twice. Maybe you can convince him to go with you again next yeah, year. I'm doing it next year. <laughs> yeah, well, that's yes, good. I good. I, good I, for you. It was you. a piece of cake. It really good. was. I mean, I looked like I was a little afraid, but I really... No, you didn't look like you were afraid. You just you looked like you were going over for the yeah, first time because you had yeah. never been through that process before, and, really and we've was. all through that. It was interesting. Yeah. It Good. really was. Good. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by to talk about it. Now you can relax and go enjoy the rest of the day. Volunteering, of course. Yeah, so, all right. Rose Dagg, who got to go over the edge, and unlike a lot of people, she didn't ha spend weeks working up to it and getting nervous about it because she found out about 20 minutes before she leaned over that she was going over. All right. Speaking Speaking of families and their involvement in Special Olympics, Sarah Jungling and Paul Jungling are up on the ropes. Paul is the father of a Special Olympics athlete, Morgan Jungling, and Sarah is Morgan's sister, so obviously Paul's daughter. Uh, Sarah is a uh, Special Olympics volunteer, and they wanted to go over together. Sarah has gone over three times. Paul is a first-time edger. So we've had a lot of instances where parents have uh, encouraged their children to come with them. This is a case where the child encouraged the parent to come with it. We have Jay McCormick from Caesar Rodney High School, who we just talked about as he went down. Jay, have a seat. Pull that microphone real close to you. 
uh, pretend it's your best friend so we can talk to you about the experience. This was your first time, correct? That is right. You've never true. done anything. You're a cyclist, a cyclocross. you crazy enough to do 20-foot cliffs while skiing. We talked about that. Not sure why you'd ever want to do that. But how was your first experience, uh, I assume, your first time ever rappelling off of anything? Absolutely. So, and how was it? Uh, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's what they say. Um, if the, the going over the edge is the hardest part, you know, because once you go over, you realize, oh, I can't go back up, so there's only one way down. Right. And uh, so that it was terrifying. But then once you go a couple floors in and, and you start to get the hang of it and, and you get comfortable and you get a speed, it, it, it makes it a little bit easier. But um, it's it's cripplingly you know, terrifying right. when you're up there. <laughs> now, you don't have any relatives with special needs or anything like that. So what inspired you to want to do this event? Uh, well, Although I don't have any family with it, uh, I, I have been very fortunate to to work a little bit with special need athletes uh, over the last couple years, especially at the school. Uh, we have a, the Charlton program, which we house in Cesar Rodney School District and have a, a very large number of Charlton students at the high school. Um, that is something that, that seeing those students participate in unified sports this year with unified football and unified basketball and, and, and seeing that is has been uh, tremendous and being able to see the, the look on everybody's face. Um, special needs athletes, the, the non-special needs athletes, everybody. It, it's an awesome experience. Sarah and Paul Jungling coming down on the roof right now. You can see uh, that Sarah on the left, Paul on the right. We're talking with Jay McCormick, uh, a teacher at Cesar Rodney High School. Are you a teacher with the Charlton program at Cesar Rodney High School? So you're at Cesar Rodney High School, yep. Yep. and you get to work with them uh, there. And so, um, you know, we appreciate all you do with the school and with the system and, and, and the opportunity that you've had to uh, do this. Where would you rank this event, this experience, compared to the other things you do, ski jumping and uh, that kind of stuff? Have you ever gone out of a plane, you know, skydive, anything like that? Or? No, I, I have a, a, a moderate fear of heights. Okay. Uh, I, I would say actually a, a pretty significant fear of heights, actually. Uh, hmm. It was funny because the students that got me to do this, I told them I had a moderate fear, and they said, well, that's good. If it was a major fear, that might be a problem. It's only moderate. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so from that standpoint, um, I, I would say this definitely ranks as the most adrenaline-filled. I mean, I, I race mountain bikes, race cyclocross. Right, yeah. Um, and uh, I would say all of those, you know, you get the butterflies in your stomach, but but none of but you, you work the butterflies out pretty quick, and you realize you can control that a little bit with how right. hard you push. But um, but this definitely, you know, you're up there, and there's no, and the butterflies are are, are, are definitely churning. Right. So this is definitely the most adrenaline that that I've had <laughs> doing anything. So opportunity to do it next year, maybe thinking about it, wait and see, maybe try to get somebody else from Cesar Rodney High School you know, to experience I, it. I was I was really proud of the outpouring of support from the Cesar Rodney High School community, right? And staff and families. I mean, I, I can't thank them enough for yeah. how much they came out and supported this. Uh, I also want to give special recognition to the two students that helped pioneer this. Uh, Lillian Ayers and Noel Ruggiero are two sophomores in my class. They're oh, the neat. ones that really pushed for this. Worked with Athletic Director Bob Ron and Principal Dr. Sherry Kioski to put mm -hmm. this together. While they were able to, to, to raise the funds for to see me do it this year, I think it would be great to see if maybe we could get get, get other else. people to exactly. raise funds for, right. for another staff member. Yeah, yeah it school. can be an annual event just for somebody else each and every year. I, I think I think it would be great to pass yeah. this on to, to another staff member to give them the, the opportunity to do this. And you mentioned the uh, the two students who were involved in it, and I assume they're part of the Unified Champion School program down there, which uh, Cesar Rodney High School, I don't know if you're probably not aware yet, has received one of six banners recognition for Special Olympics and the involvement in the Unified Champion School program. You guys were featured on PBS uh, a couple weeks ago. Actually, maybe it's been a couple months ago because of the outstanding job that Nate Treats yep. and several other teachers down there do uh, involved in not only the Unified Sports program in the school, you're involved in the Interscholastic program, Unified Sports, uh, in all of the sports that they do. So just a tremendous job that Cesar Rodney School does from the top down and it all starts at the top like we know anything if there's no support from the top and so the principal you mentioned is very supportive of Special Olympics your athletic director very involved in the committee that we have for unified sports and then of course Nate Threat and the other teachers there including yourself so thank you for being part of this today get back to Caesar Rodney and find out which rider is going to be here next year sounds good place. you guys so, are you know just, um, just the rest of the staff be forewarned you're up all righty <laughs> <laughs> all right Jay thank you very much for stopping by enjoy the ride home it'll be a lot less nerve-wracking than the ride here I'm you sure. got that right but, so right. thank you very much Jay for McCormick on. yep Jay McCormick from Caesar Rodney High School uh, the junglings have landed you can see Sarah jungling there and uh, she's a third timer and Paul jungling 
also. Uh, that is Morgan Jungling there in the green hat. If you're on social media, you've probably heard or seen a Morgan if you follow Special Olympics. She's a big social media person, big uh, basketball fan of the University of Delaware, big Alina Deladon and a Kayla Miller fan back in the heyday. And uh, that is mom, I believe, there taking the picture. Uh, Mark Wise in the yellow jacket, a member of the Special Olympics Delaware staff. And uh, there is somebody from Jimmy's crew in the background there getting a social media shot. So getting angles of everybody everywhere. Paul going for the first time. Sarah convinced him to go.